Look at this weather. It's only gonna last another day, but look at this weather. I spent today at the coast yesterday with a friend, so it was a nice uh, get away from everything. But today, I got this to work on. And we got this to install. Jet flying over, sorry about that. But uh, a lot of you guys know, ordered this, been sitting in the garage for a few weeks. Uh, Iron Man 4x4 uh, foam cell pro suspension. So if we go back in time, four and a half years ago, uh, actually let's go back even further, four and a half years ago when I bought this, this suspension was on my radar, but it wasn't really super known, so I wasn't too amped about it. And I fell into this uh, TRD Pro Bilstein setup, which has worked awesome. Uh, it still actually works really good, just kind of wanted to change things up. So, ordered the Iron Man setup. Uh, so this is a three inch front, two inch rear. It is the, I think they call it the medium springs. I'd actually called and talked to Iron Man. And for what I do, they, they agreed that was kind of the best uh, spring choice. I don't have any, uh, you know, tents or any extra weight on there. So anyways, gonna take it, install this today. Going to uh, do it myself here on the ground with floor jacks and jack stands. No lift for me and probably won't go through it much. There's a hundred videos that show you how to install this and a hundred videos reviewing this stuff. So it's gonna be a bit of time lapse and I will hit the highlights if I can, but I mainly just wanna get this installed today. So first things first, let's get this uh, tires off. I think I'm gonna pull the front sway bar completely off to make life easy and start bolting it in. All right, just real quick, got the passenger side tire off just so I could access the uh, sway bar, disconnected it, put the nut back on there so I don't lose it. Disconnected from the frame. As you saw, I pulled the skid plates off because it only takes a couple minutes and just frees up a lot of room. Um, so, got a jack stand under there. I'm actually gonna throw this tire back on uh, just with a couple lug nuts just because there's no reason for it to be off. Just a little bit more safety because I'm gonna actually start on the other side. So, that's just a quick update. Oh, and some of you saw, I don't know, a few weeks ago when we did that spacer, I started questioning these upper ball joints. Now, I don't think they're like totally shot by any means, but eventually they're gonna need to be replaced. So part of the motivation of doing this is I got the Ironman upper control arms, which have the new ball joints. So to replace that and it's kind of a maintenance of a wear item, if you will. So yeah, all right, let's put this tire back on and go to the other side and get started. All right, just a quick status update. So, sway bar is fully disconnected from the frame and the spindles on both sides. It's kind of the way this the sway bar lays is weird, but it'll get out of the way. Um, I removed two of the three top hat stud nuts. I left one on their finger tight just so nothing drops, just kind of a safety. I've got the cotter pin removed and the nut is just barely threaded on there and you'll see why in a second. Um, and so the next step, let's see, so we're on a jack stand, tire for extra safety, floor jack holding the pressure, is you've got to hit the spindle right here um, with a hammer. And I've honestly never done it this way, but I know it works. And I've seen everybody do it with a mini sledge. Uh, I have a little hammer, I'm just gonna try it, because everything on this Forerunner, like there's no corrosion, everything comes apart great. So I'm gonna see if I can just tap on it with a little hammer. If not, I do have a brass mini sledge that I'll go to town with. Um, that'll separate. And then actually I'm gonna jack it up a little bit more to take some more tension off because the upper control arm is kind of under sprung weight a little bit because of the bushings. So anyways, yeah, let's break that apart and go from there. Um, also, let's just talk about a couple other little tips that I don't know, I've always done. Make fun of it if you want. Gloves, these are actually wore out. There's, you know, there's a hole in one of the fingers, you know, several of them. I've had these a long time. Um, and I just don't want to give them up. I have a brand new pair sitting on the workbench, identical, because I like them. I'm just going to wear these out for good. And I do have an impact gun, cordless. I, it's not super powerful. It's just the uh, the 20 volt. So it doesn't necessarily break things loose, but I like to use a breaker bar or half inch drive to break things loose. And I just use that to kind of finish it off instead of wasting time. Makes life a little easier. Um, and I've talked about this before, this mat for just laying down underneath because the gravel sucks. But I like to have a table out. I've got all my tools out on a table. I don't like them laying on the ground. 
Um, when I kind of finish one task, I go put them all back because nothing frustrates, frustrates me more than just hunting for tools. So I bring out what I need. If it was a really big job, I'd bring out the whole toolbox, but that pretty much covers it. And these magnetic trays, my goodness. I mean, they're like a buck or two from Harbor Freight. Um, I've got a few more that are still stashed away in the garage just for storing everything so you don't lose it. But okay, so let's keep going on this. I mean, we're only like an hour into it and we're this far. All right, so we're empty over here. Got the old strut and spring assembly out. Upper control arms right there. Actually didn't go too bad. I don't know when the time lapse died. The battery died in that camera because GoPro. Um, but one thing I did, because I've seen everybody else do it, was to take the whole, that assembly out before the upper control arm. I always kind of wondered why, and I still wonder why, because if you take the upper control arm out, that guy comes right out easy that's that's clear so i'm gonna put the new one back in strut first and then upper control arm to do that but yeah the bolt slid out i had to remove one bracket under the hood i don't know if you'll be able to see it but kind of under the battery there's a bracket it's one 10 millimeter bolt it's just some wiring harness um and it came right out like i've done this by myself so let's put these side by side compare new to old and start putting stuff back together because this is going way too good knock on wood all right guys so as you saw we got everything out just unboxed a few things just wanted to kind of show this i actually went and drug uh the bone stock suspension that i took out of this rig when it was brand new just went and got it for comparison so you can kind of see the the size difference with the pro suspension in the middle and then the iron man uh foam cell pro on the right obviously as well as the control arms now control arms are pretty obvious they're they're different for both sides they're labeled on the bottom left hand and right hand and the uh, strut assembly is also side specific. I don't know if it says on the strut itself, but it does on the box. You got driver and passenger, so. Yeah, let's get these bolted in. All right, guys, good progress. So, it's all in there. Um, I've already kind of went through, I've tightened everything. I drilled out the bracket, put the stainless screw in there. It looks like I put a little blue Loctite on it. Um, one thing everybody says, don't tighten that bolt in the upper control arm until you set it down. Reason being, you want it to be at its right height where you tighten those bushings because that's where we're gonna rest. I actually have it supported with the jack stand. So it's on, it's suspension. The suspension's holding the weight now. So that is where it's gonna be. So I tightened it. Um, Worst case, what I'll probably do is in a few weeks when things settle, is I'll get in here, I'll loosen it, let everything kind of reset, then tighten it again. But, yeah, the only thing I gotta do is I gotta put that one bracket back in in the engine bay, and this side is ready to go. I'm gonna go over it one more time. Oh, and the sway bar, but we're leaving that unhooked until we do the other side. So, looking good. And also, Iron Man provides a standard shoulder nut. So, <laughs> everybody who thinks they don't work, it, everybody else who uses them doesn't have a problem. All right, one o'clock, just after one o'clock, just made a little bit of breakfast. I come out here and I'm gonna bust through the passenger side real quick. So I'm just gonna set up a time lapse and get it done because it goes way faster when not trying to film. Um, so yeah, let's go through that. And yeah, got some water. If you guys have never tried these, these Element uh, electrolyte drink mixes, I pay for these, not sponsored or anything like that, but uh, pretty good, been drinking them. So, okay, let's get this side done. All right, so this side went way faster um, when I'm just going and not filming. So this was less than an hour, uh, less than an hour because there was still a tire over here. So anyways, this side went really good. Um, I gotta tighten the bolt through the upper control arm still, I gotta jack it up and then I'm gonna tackle the sway bar because there are new brackets for that. And then the front will be done. We'll move to the rear. So, all right, let's keep going. All right, so I guess I never paid much attention to it, but that is the new Iron Man bracket, which is a nice piece of, I'm guessing, aluminum. And you can see it's kind of offset, so it sticks the, uh, pushes the sway bar forward. 
I didn't realize what those were. Those are actually really nice. Um, so, okay. Comes with new hardware and everything. Arrow points to the front. Towards the front uses a stock rubber bushing. So, let's throw these in. Again. Really nice. All right. Front's all buttoned up. Everything's tight. Sway bar's back on. Skid plates are back on. It's a lot taller. Let's, uh, I'm going to pull it forward so we can work on the back in the same area. All right, one more quick status update since I haven't really been recording, just doing. Uh, passenger side rear is done. It actually went, again, smoother than I thought it would. Uh, you know, no rust or anything. Everything comes apart pretty easy. Uh, one thing that I've seen a lot of people struggle with is getting the nut on top of the shock because they can't, uh, the shaft turns and everybody tries to get pliers in there. I always wondered why nobody did this. I still don't know why people don't do this, but just take a quarter inch open-ended wrench. It fits on there perfect. Little tiny wrench holds it right in place. So I did disconnect the sway bar to make this happen. One of the tricks getting the springs out, if you let this side all the way down and jack the other side up, it actually takes the tension out, the spring comes right out. So pretty simple. So yeah, get this tire on there and uh, jump to the driver's side, get it buttoned up and we're almost done. All right, first test drive. Um, it took, I'm just doing quick math here. So we started right at 10, it's done by 4.30, took an hour lunch, so three thirty, so five and a half hours. Five and a half hours to do all the stage two, including upper control arms by myself. Um, on the ground with floor jack and jack stands. Yeah, definitely taller, which we expected and it'll probably settle some. Uh, not going to even give it a review or any opinion on it because I've driven a mile. So, probably drive, I don't know, next month or so. And let it settle, get in alignment, see what we think. But what I can say to the kit is that everything fit great. Like, I didn't have any problems. One, everything came apart just fine because there's just no corrosion on this 4Runner. And two, everything fit. Like, Control arms fit, springs fit, everything just fit. Everything just went together as it should have. Um, if there was one thing I would critique, it would be the driver's side front strut assembly wasn't clocked completely correct, but it wasn't a big deal. I just got the bottom mounted and, and twisted the top with a screwdriver and kind of spun it a couple degrees. Everything lined up. So aside from that, it's uh, definitely taller when you get in and out of it. The first time I jumped out, I thought I was gonna fall. So I'm pretty excited. I like it. I'm really happy. So again, you know, I'll give it some time. I'll give a review. It'll be an interesting review because most people go from stock to this, which is going to make a huge difference. I'm going from the Pro Bilstein setup, which was a pretty good suspension, um, to this, which I think is it's going to be comparable. I, I don't expect anything crazy. Uh, but yeah, if it's comparable, then, it, you know, that's good in my opinion. I thought the Pro suspension was great. So anyways, that's it. I'm going to uh, go home, take a shower and rest because I'm, I'm tired. That was a long day of doing suspension work. So yeah, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.